an ionization energy. Okay, we're going to make this one a little different. We're going to go over the general trend of ionization energy on this video. We talked about before that ionization energy is generally, okay, the ability of a valence electron to be removed from an atom's outermost energy level. Okay, so you want to think about this for a minute. Look at the periodic table. Let's go over the basics first. This right here is the zigzag. This separates all the metals from the non-metals, and eventually we'll get to something called metalloids, which are right on the, uh, right on the boundary line. Over here we've got the reactivity, the most reactive metals over here. These are called the alkali metals. They have one valence electron, group one. We've done this before. Group two has two valence electrons. Let's look at these guys over here. Okay. All these guys want to have a valence electron removed from its outer shell. Okay. So therefore, thinking about the amount of energy required to remove a valence electron, okay. These over here tend to have lower ionization energies. It does not require as much energy to remove a valence electron because they want to lose a valence electron or two. Why? To achieve stability, that full outer shell, which we talked about before. So generally, ionization energy over on this side is really low. Okay, now let's look within this area over here. Let's think about atomic radius. Remember before we talked about atomic radius? As you go down a group, remember that? We said we each we add energy levels of electrons as we go down a group. Okay? So what you see is period one, period two, period three, period. Okay, we go down. But here's the thing. This is smaller than this. And as we go down, it gets larger. We keep adding levels of electrons from the positively charged nucleus. Okay, it's like a magnetic attraction called columbic attraction. Negative electrons are attracted to the positive nucleus. But here's the issue. We have layers and levels of electrons. And the problem is this. These electrons close to the nucleus are attracted to the nucleus. But what about these electrons out here? They're attracted to the nucleus, right? There's a force of attraction. But it's not as great because you have these like-charged negative electrons in between, shielding and repelling these away. So the size gets larger. The force of attraction between the uh, negative electrons, the positive nucleus, decreases as the size of the atom gets larger. Now that's important, okay? So again, we did it before. As you go down a group, right? The size, the radius gets larger, the force of attraction decreases. Now how is that relevant with ionization energy? Okay? If we determine that ionization energy, energy required to remove a valence electron, okay? If we looked at different ionization energies within this group, now they're all generally low over here because they want to lose, okay? But if you want to look over here, which one do you think would require the least amount of energy to remove a valence electron? Would it be lithium with the smallest radius? And they want to lose one. They're very reactive, obviously. And so, francium, they want to lose one, and they're really reactive. Which requires the least amount of energy? Francium, because it's farthest away from the positive nucleus. So is it easier to remove an electron that's closer to the nucleus? A valence electron closer to the nucleus, where there's attraction right there, a greater force of attraction? Is there, going to be need, is there going to be more energy required to remove that? Not much, because it only wants to give it away. But, it, you know, more than francium, where the valence electron's all the way out here. There's not much of a force of attraction holding it, you know, in this level. It's easy to get rid of. It doesn't require much energy to cause that change. So, again, over here, the ionization energies tend to be lower than over there. We'll go over there in a minute. But, again, as you go down the group over here, that as the atomic radius gets bigger, generally, the amount of energy needed to remove a valence electron over here gets smaller. It's easier to have, to have happen. So we'll review. Larger distance from the nucleus, smaller force of attraction, columbic attraction, smaller ionization energy. Okay? So over here you have your greatest ionization energy. And then as in there are a couple exceptions as we go this way. But as you go this way and up, diagonally, what starts to happen? What's the need? These over here, these over here want to give away valence electrons. Okay? Over here, these are going to want to gain, but they're not going to want to give away valence electrons. So therefore, you're going to have to get a lot of energy to pull valence electrons away from these elements over here. 
Okay? So these have higher ionization energies to the point where you're only over here at the noble gases. They have the highest ionization energy because they have a full outer shell. They're not going to give away those valence electrons. But now let's go back. So over here, these, are, these require more energy to remove electrons. These require less. Lower, lower ionization energy, higher ionization energy. Now, let's look within the halogen family. Okay, let me double check the camera looks good. Look within the halogen family. Let's compare fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine. Take a look. Oh, good, you can still see it. Look up here. If we compare right here, generally, fluorine of this group right here tends to have the highest ionization energy. Where's its valence electron located? in comparison to its nucleus. Pretty close. Not only does it want to gain a valence electron, but if you're going to remove that electron out of that level, not only do you have to overcome the idea of the halogen is going to give away a valence electron, that's the first thing. Second thing, then you have to deal with the strong force of attraction to the nucleus. Not only, right, are you near the nucleus, you have nine protons in that nucleus. Nine. It's a pretty strong nucleus with electrons close by, with seven electrons. So a lot of it's force of attraction right there. So therefore, that's going to require a high ionization energy. I mean, up here, really high. Again, full outer shell. Stability. Why give one away? Requires a lot of energy. Also, distance to the nucleus. Okay. So again, general trend, ionization energy, smallest over in this region over here, Farthest away from the nucleus, least attraction, least amount of energy required to make the change, to remove it. As we go up there, increases. Why? Because what they want to do, they want to gain, they don't want to lose, right? They don't want to lose. Plus, as you go up that way, you're getting closer to that nucleus that those electrons are attracted to. So therefore, again, more energy is going to, is, is required to cause that change or remove that electron, okay? Hopefully you found this helpful. I'll try to add more worksheets on ionization energy and periodicity. I think there are a lot on there already. But hopefully that works. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. All right. There you go.